Hey everybody, uh, last time uh, I did a tutorial, I showed you how to uh, have a character pick up and throw something uh, in uh, using Lightwave, and now I'm going to show you the similar thing uh, using Blender. And let's go ahead and take a look at the animation I did of this Anubis character before, in case you hadn't seen it. You can find it on my YouTube site. Anyway, you can see here that, let me just show this part again here, he actually picks up these two Kopesh swords and then they're parented to his hand dynamically and then he starts doing his like little sword kata so let's show you how this is done um, let's go ahead through the animation here and okay now he picks up the first one I haven't parented to it yet there's the second one you can see the second one is actually reacting so let's select the second sword here oops if we go into the constraints panel it looks like a little chain You'll see that what I did was I selected um, the sword, and then I selected this under constraint relationship, child of constraint. And um, then I went, and let me go ahead and show you uh, step by step how to use this child of constraint with the other sword here. Okay, so we select this sword. This sword doesn't have anything parented to it, so, or it doesn't have any constraint. Okay, so let's select it and go and add the child of constraint to it. All right, I'm going to make sure I'm on my... Uh, frame zero here just so that anything uh, any settings I make will happen at the beginning of, of the animation okay and um, let's go ahead and set up this constraint so it works correctly uh, let's see the first thing I want to do is I want to inherit the location and rotation of the child or the the parent object but not the scale because if I leave the scale check marked then of course this object will be scaled the same as the bone that's in the guy's hand that we you know that wouldn't make any sense so I'm going to uncheck that. Uh, so next under target, I'll just select armature. And you'll see that it kind of jumps to the new object there. And then under bone, the bone inside the armature that I want is the, let's go down here, it's called Kopesh. Where is that book? Kopesh target L, I think. Yep. Let's see, this one is set to, yeah, Kopesh target L, okay? But the problem is, um, we've set it like this, but um, you can see here the influence is set to 1. If we start you know, turning the influence off, you'll see that the object goes back to its normal position. The problem is that uh, you know, the object is in fact not in its, you know, it's in this kind of weird offset position. So um, to overcome this, you just click on the set inverse button, okay? And then it'll jump to its normal position, all right? So, you know, basically, the only thing you have to know is to go ahead, you know, uncheck the scale, uh, um, you know, click uh, set inverse, and it'll jump back to its normal position. Uh, and then we can go ahead and start animating the influence of this um, uh, constraint here. So I'm going to turn the constraints influence off, go into zero here, and then with my mouse hovered over this, I'll just hit I to set a, um, a, a keyframe, and uh, you can see it kind of turns yellow, means that keyframe has been set here. So let's just scrub through the animation and find the point where the hand grasps onto the sword blade right about there it's frame 109 okay so this is the last frame where the sword is kind of on its own power so I'm gonna keyframe uh, by hovering over this you could also kind of just scrub the uh, influence back and forth to set a keyframe you can just hit I to set a keyframe and then I'll just um, with my you know again when you hover over a mouse in any window in Blender you can kind of see that that window kind of highlights, and then all the keyboard shortcuts um, take precedence for that window. So I'm going to hover over my little timeline down here and just press the um, arrow key to the right one. So that moves me one frame. Okay, and so now I'm going to you know set the influence to 100 percent or 1 percent, uh, 1.0, and you'll see that it's it's kind of flying off into space again. If it does that, hit set inverse again. Oop. I'm sorry, clear inverse. Okay, there we go. Clear the inverse and then set the inverse if you keep getting those problems. But basically, you just have to do that one time. Once it's it's done, then okay, now it's it's happening the way you expect it. Okay. Let's let's cut this out and do it again. So we can go back through it piece by piece. So add the child of constraint, turn off the scale, uh, set the target to the armature, set the bone. To the bone that I want to control the object. Okay. And turn my influence off. 
and then I'll just go ahead and animate okay go to the last frame where the object is under its own control and create a new keyframe there with the influence set to zero I'll just hit I over there and then I'll just go ahead and uh, move one frame and oh it's already got a keyframe set for that and then if again if it's if it's kind of flying off into its own space here just set the inverse okay and if set inverse doesn't work then hit clear inverse and then set inverse again okay so now we see that it in fact is working correctly okay and the same thing for the other so basically um, let's run through it again uh, child of constraint used for dynamic parenting stuff and again if you wanted him later on to throw this thing you would just animate the um, influence uh, from one from 1 1.0 to 0, 0.0 and then animate the sword uh, flying off his hand after that. But basically uh, the, the things to be aware of are again you probably want to turn the scale off. Uh, you, if you want you can just have certain selected channels be controlled by this one bone so you could have very complex uh, dynamic relationships happening if you wished. Um, for most part you'll just want to use it as a you know thing for having your characters pick up and put something down. So um, I, again uh, turn off the scale and remember that the set inverse and clear inverse buttons are used to, if you get the um, object flying off into space there, you just click those and, and once you set them, as you can see as you scrub through the animation, it's, it's working exactly the way you would expect it to. Okay, so that's how to do the um, parent-child animation relationships in, in Blender.